Are you taking the SAT soon and wondering how do I improve my SAT math score? Well, this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna go over some of my favorite SAT math timing tips. Before we get started though, I wanna encourage everyone to subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe and also head to our website, supertutortv.com and sign up for our mailing list at supertutortv.com slash subscribe. We also have an awesome ACT video prep series. It's a complete prep series for the ACT. It's like sitting across the desk from me as your private tutor, sharing all the secrets with you that I've shared with my students that's led some of them to even get a perfect score on the test. So go check that out. Uh, and without further ado, let's get started. So I have three tips for you guys today that cover what are some ways to better pace yourself on the SAT math sections. The first tip that I'm gonna have for you guys is a tip that is basically, it takes a little bit of time, but it works, and that is practice. One big reason that a lot of people have trouble on both the SAT no calculator section and the calculator section is that they are confronting questions that they've just never seen before. It's not that they don't have the problem solving chops and if they have all the time in the world, these people can actually do every problem. In fact, this was me when I first confronted my first practice test for the new SAT. I actually did not complete the no calculator section in time. I was a minute over. And I'm sitting here and when I was in high school, I got a perfect score on the SAT math exam. As an adult, I've gotten a perfect score on the SAT math exam, including this exam and the 2400 exam. But even I was struggling on time. And the reason that I was a minute over has to do with the fact that I ran into a couple of problems that I just had never quite seen before. And so my approach, I may have had a few false starts, right? I may have tried one thing and then thought, oh wait, that's not actually the way I need to approach it. I need to approach it this way. So here are some examples. The SAT has a bunch of questions that as I like to say, require you to put a word problem into inequality or equation form. And these can throw people a little bit because sometimes the way that they set up the inequality or the equation isn't quite how you would set it up. And so then you have to manipulate things around. And, and also some people just struggle with word problems. The, the way to deal with these kind of things oftentimes is practice because they're not the kind of questions that you get in math class. Most of the time in math class, you don't have random variables in the answer choices. And yes, you can kind of make up numbers to kind of help you through and there's different ways to do this, but you need to practice these so that you get them so that you're able to do them more quickly. And you need to familiarize yourself with the kind of questions that are specific to the SAT because the SAT has questions that your math class at school never had. It builds on all the skills that you should have gotten in math class, but the way that the questions are asked and the way that the answers are presented is a little bit different. And that's why we get into the situation in which people understand how to do the problem, but it takes them a while to work it because they've never worked a problem quite like that before. The best thing to do is practice. Uh, your best resources for practice are there's eight real SAT practice tests that we will put a link to in the description and we'll also put a card um, if you click on the card that will go to our resources page on supertutortv.com and we have links out to all eight of those tests on our resources page. The other thing that you can do is check out Khan Academy has an amazing resource of tons and tons of math practice drills. And so if you kind of figure out some of the types of problems that you particularly struggle with after taking a couple of practice tests, you can drill down those kind of areas so that you're on speed. A lot of times what I say is if you just go over the ones that you missed, you might not be recognizing the ones that took you forever. So make sure you identify what's taking forever and brush those up. The second tip that I have for timing on the SAT math section is don't necessarily do all the multiple choice first. Do you see how this multiple choice section here, you see like 14 and 15. My experience is that question number 15 and maybe even question number 14 on the no calculator section tend to be harder than these questions here, the early fill in the blank questions. What happens on the SAT is that there's actually two different segments of math questions. You have your multiple choice math questions and then you have your open answer math questions. And the open answer math questions, the first few are a lot easier than the last few of the multiple choice. So it's worth your while if you're running out of time on this test or the calculator section to actually do the open answer questions, at least the first few of them, before you attempt these multiple choice ones for two reasons. One, 
if you have a grid in, there's almost no way you're going to spontaneously guess the right answer. Whereas if you have a multiple choice question, it's possible you might guess the right answer. So if I'm gonna leave something to last, I wanna leave something to last that I at least have a one in four shot of guessing it right, yes? I don't wanna leave for the end a bunch of questions that even if I guess A, 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 well, there's no A to guess. So I'm screwed and I get zero points. So that's the first reason that I like to do them out of order. And then the second reason is that oftentimes, just seriously, one of the hardest problems on the test is usually the last multiple choice question and it will take you longer, even if you know how to do it. So um, because these can be particularly time consuming, these last couple multiple choice questions, it's better to go to the open answer questions, field your way through those, then come back and do those last couple of multiple choice questions, cool? And then my third point about timing tips is to just simply pace yourself. And what pace yourself means is that even if you didn't get to the right answer yet, at a certain point, you have to move on. You can't keep dwelling on the question. And you also need to know at what point do I need to move on? And in order to do that, you can do a little bit of math. So what I always like to figure out is how many minutes do I have per question? In my ideal world, at least on the calculator section, I like to have five minutes left at the end. So that means I wanna finish 38 questions in 50 minutes. So how many minutes per question do I get? If I do 50 divided by 38, I'm gonna get my goal minutes per question to give me five minutes at the end, right? I can do that, I get about 1.3. If I do that division, approximately, I'm just rounding. So then I take 1.3 minutes and I multiply it by certain numbers of questions. I could say like after 13 minutes, I'm gonna be at number 10. So then I'll go here and I'll write 13. So I should be around 13 minutes at number 10. Then at number 20, I should be around 26 minutes. Cool. and then I would write like 26 here. So I can actually even enter those values into my graphing calculator and have them in my graphing calculator so that I know what my timing cues are. I can say at number 10, I should be at 13 minutes. At number 20, I should be at 26 minutes. At number 30, I should be at 39 minutes. And then I can write these time cue numbers down on my test. And you can do the same thing on the calculator section. Obviously it's shorter, so maybe you don't want as many minutes at the end. Maybe you want two minutes to go over stuff at the end instead of five that you can do the same division problem and create benchmarks for yourself for how far along you should be, and then write down little cues for yourself. Keep track of time, make sure you bring a watch, one that doesn't beep, one that isn't a smart watch, like an Apple watch, don't bring that, they won't let you use it. And then you can keep track of your pace and force yourself to move on if something takes too long because every question is worth the same number of points. And very likely, if you're spending too much time on a question, you might be able to get a different question right if you just moved on. So that's about it for my timing tips for the SAT. I hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And again, go check out supertutortv.com. If you're taking the SAT, go check out our other videos. We have lots more tips on this test and I'll see you guys next time.